Hi, I'm John Wilder, historian for Aleppo Shrine. Uh, today I brought you a couple items which may be rather recognizable to, uh, to Shriners and, and Masons. Uh, these are small pins which consist of the Shrine logo, the Shrine symbol. The various parts of this, uh, which a lot of people don't realize have symbolism. You have the scimitar on top, which stands for the members who are the backbone of the fraternity. You have the Sphinx head, which is the imperial divan, the imperial officers who are the ruling body of the shrine. You have the claws. These are two separate claws. They're not, they're often referred to as a crescent, but they are actually two separate claws. Uh, and they stand for the two sides of our fraternity the fraternal and the charitable, the charitable being the hospital system. And the star that hangs below is representative of the millions of children that we have helped. Now, if you know anything about the history of the shrine, the shrine was founded 150 years ago in 1872, and the hospital system wasn't founded until 50 years later in 1922. So if you're like me, you wonder, well, what did it mean before 1922? And uh, unfortunately, there aren't many students of early shrine history, so that's still a question I'm looking to answer myself. But uh, when I find out, I'll be sure to let you know. But anyway, um, so this was the original badge of a shriner, along with his fez. He would often have a jewel. It'd be worn on the lapel. And... You'll see these really nice ones done in gold or silver, and they'll have real claws, either from a Bengal tiger or some sort of uh, large cat. Um, but we, you'll see ones that look very similar to this one, this size, the shading, and specifically the style of writing that has the temple name. This one is from Aleppo, but the claws are not claw, they are celluloid. This was made in the early 1920s as a more affordable way uh, for you to have the shrine badge. I've seen these made in tin, I've seen these made in thin metal with painted enamel, but this is a very specific one, which similar to our video, which we've done um, with the uh, Sh Springfield Hospital Souvenirs, we found an item and then we found the paperwork to back it up. So, as I mentioned, you'll see these, and we actually have in our collection another one. We have a couple from Aleppo, but we have one from Palestine Temple, which is now Rhode Island Shriners. But as I mentioned, you'll see these. Sometimes you'll see them where, since this is one piece of celluloid, it actually slides out, so sometimes you'll see them and they're missing this part. But if you can... I'll put a picture of this when we post the video, but this style of writing across here pretty much shows that it is from this company that made these. So when we were going through a scrapbook from an early member of the Aleppo Air Patrol, who kept pretty much every piece of paper that the Shrine sent him between, uh, I believe it was 1922 and 1931, which was a fantastic resource, we found this brochure. This is from the F.I. Gorton Company on Elm Street in North Attleboro, Mass., who you may know was uh, the one of the capitals of fraternal jewelry making. And it is a, uh, a directory of all of the temples. It has all the temples listed, along with the membership standing from January 1st, 1926 to January 20. 1st, 1927. So if we look up at Aleppo, we have Boston Mass. In 1926, they had 15,139 members. And the next year, they had grown to 15,316 members, which is not far off from our largest membership ever, which was in the 1600s. But regardless, they offer the name of your temple in polished hard enamel in the blade of the scimitar, Hilt set with ruby doublet, claws of celluloid, jewel heavily gold-plated and warranted to wear for five years. Sent to any address of the United States and Canada on receipt of price, $2. In ordering, give name of the temple. 
and on the back they also offered various uh, enameled and jeweled bar and lapel pins which were advertised as a great gift to give your lady but uh, we were able to tell from the description here given you have the name of the temple the false ruby stone the celluloid claw and from the many examples as we as we said that we've seen and the few that we have that these even though that they're not marked from this company they are definitely um, what is advertised here and I haven't seen any other company that made these so I do believe they're all from the same company this would have been either mailed out by the temple or given out at an imperial session as you know here's a handy guide for of all the temples and oh by the way we're advertising what we're selling on it this was a common practice you'll see uh, railroad companies that would give out shrine directories lodge directories different manufacturers um, so it is a bit of a crossover piece but I think it's strict it, in this case it's probably strictly shrine because they are directing it to shriners for selling a uh, piece of shrine memorabilia so um, so it's a great piece it's we uh, unfortunately don't have any of the real claw examples but uh, we do like talking about the celluloid version which was the uh, every man's um, shrine uh, medallion and uh, as I mentioned this would have been worn on the lapel uh, when you're in your fez for formal uh, formal events and uh, I do have a another example in my uh, personal collection which I do wear to events as I do like to talk about it and uh, and tell people the story behind them I'd be interested to see uh, how many you know how many people have those celluloid ones from different temples how many were actually made I've seen about a dozen different temple names on them but I'd be interested to see which ones are out there but uh, if you like what you see remember to like our video subscribe to our page and follow us on Facebook thank you Thank you.